Hello and welcome to our assembly, our act of worship on teamwork today. I'm going to start, if I may, with a couple of jokes. What's the difference between a businessman and a dog? I don't know. What is the difference between a businessman and a dog? A businessman wears a suit, a dog just pants. <laughs> Let's try another one. What do you call a fish with no eyes? I don't know. What do you call a fish with no eyes? <laughs> oh, well, you could hear all the people laughing at those. But what does this have to do with teamwork? Well, bear with me. Let's start by taking a look at the Bible text for this week. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labour. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. A text from Ecclesiastes. And focusing on that second half of that text, one can help the other up. What does that mean? What does it mean in terms of how we support people around us, how we support people who are in our team? How do we help them up? Well, we need to start by thinking about the teams that we're a part of during lockdown. These aren't literal teams. You're not playing with your football team anymore. You're not in your choir. You're not in your orchestra. You're not able to go to your drama club or whatever else it might be that you really enjoy doing because you can't see those people. So what do we mean by a team at this stage for us to show teamwork to? Well, it's the people that we are spending time with. It's the people who we are supporting. It's, it's the people we are working with to try to achieve things. So for me, the teams that I'm a part of at the moment, well, first, I suppose, my work colleagues, people who are still working hard, in school sometimes, but mainly at home, trying to deliver lessons, trying to keep everybody safe, trying to stay in touch with people. We're using email, we're using Zoom calls, we're using video calls, we're recording lessons. There's a range of different things going on, people working together to try to achieve a common goal. And there are also others that I'm spending time with, but a lot of that is being done remotely. So I like going running. And usually I'd meet up with people to go running with, but I can't do that at the moment. So I'm relying on things like Strava on my phone to show me what runs other people are doing so that I can share with them the runs that I'm doing and then we can end up talking tediously at length about the kind of runs that we've been doing. You should ask my daughter, she's convinced that I'm tedious when I'm talking about my running. But I'm also doing the other things that I like doing. I'm playing board games. I love playing board games, but I can't meet people and sit around the table at the moment. So again, there's an app, Tabletop Simulator, that I've been using and I sit there and I can play board games with my friends. I'm really enjoying it. I'm actually spending more time than I usually do speaking to my family. I'm having video calls with them at least once a week where we all meet up and we sit around talking over each other and struggling to understand what each other are saying. But all of you will have experienced that as well, trying out video calls to stay in touch with people and staying in touch with friends that I haven't seen for some years in some cases, but because there's a Zoom call, somehow we all get together. And as well as all of that virtual stuff, there's the people that I'm genuinely spending time with, my family, the people that I'm stuck in lockdown with, living with day after day, week after week, and now even month after month. So for you, it'll be different. It won't be that you're into board games and running. You're into something else, I'm sure. But I hope you're finding ways to still engage in those things, to still share times with other people, to still be a part of all of those teams. And if nothing else, for all of us, we are locked down with our families, and it's that team that we need to be focusing on. So what can I do during lockdown? How can I support my team and play my part? How can I help others up when they fall down? Well, I could try my jokes, but you've seen those. You probably don't think they're that funny. I suspect they're not going to work. The key point, though, was not actually the jokes, but the laughter that went with them. Why do we have canned laughter? Why do TV shows put those tracks of people laughing on while they're trying to make you laugh? 
Well, the answer is it does make the show funnier. It makes it more enjoyable. People enjoy things more if there's a laughter track. You might have noticed this in some of the TV that you've been watching. If you watch a chat show, for instance, and at the moment there's no live studio audience, somehow it feels a bit flat. It feels like it's lacking something that it used to have. We're used to responding to the laughter of people around us. We often think of laughter as a response. We hear something funny and we respond, we laugh. But actually, it is something more complicated than that. Why is it that we laugh more when we're with other people watching something? Why is it that when people are having a conversation, it's not the people hearing the joke who do most of the laughing, it's the person telling the joke? Laughter is not just a response. It's not just what we do in response to something we find funny. Laughter is part of the communication. We laugh to say, I'm playing around. I'm trying to be funny. I want you to like me. Laughter is part of our communication with other people. We laugh not to express our emotion, but to spread our emotion, to tell other people the emotion that we want them to feel. The technical term for this is emotional contagion. We catch emotions from other people. When we're with other people, we copy their behaviours. That's how we let them know that we want to fit in with them and we want to get along with them. So when people copy our behaviours, they then find that they're catching our emotions. We can catch their emotions just like we could catch a virus from them. But the difference is, with our emotions, we can decide what it is that we want to spread. So at the moment in lockdown, it's hard not sometimes to feel negative emotions. It's understandable that we get angry, that we're frustrated, that we get bored from time to time, that it stresses us out, that we feel quite sad. The trouble is, if we spend our time showing that emotion to the people around us, because of emotional contagion, they'll catch that emotion from us. And if we show that emotion and they catch that emotion from us, they'll start to reflect that back at us. And we'll start copying them and we'll start feeling worse too. It's a negative feedback. But it does work the other way as well. And science has shown this in a range of different ways. There was a study done on Facebook where if they put more negative comments into people's feeds, those people began to post more negative comments. When they put more positive comments in, those same people would post more positive comments. We caught the emotion through Facebook. And this has been shown in a range of different environments, in coffee shops, in banks, in cricket teams. Emotions can be spread. We catch them from each other. And this is why some people will urge you to be a radiator not a drain, to show optimism, not pessimism, to be the person who's showing a positive emotion and letting them catch it from you. When you do that, they will reflect that positive emotion back at you. You will experience more positivity in your life and you will get happier over time as well. Now, this won't solve the problems of coronavirus. It's not going to cure anybody of a disease. It's not going to speed up the end of lockdown. It's not going to mean you get back to school any quicker. It is, though, your way of helping other people up. It's your way of making lockdown more bearable for you and for them. It's your way of being a part of a team. So I'd like to challenge you to try it. Cheer up. Smile. Say something nice. Maybe make somebody a cup of tea or... Even try a joke if you're prepared to give it a go. But do something to spread positivity, because then we'll all feel better for it. So I'd just like to finish, if I may, with a prayer. And as ever in our acts of worship, if you'd like to pray with me, that would be great. If you'd like instead just to think about the things I've said, that's also okay. Dear Lord, we ask us that you help us to be parts of the teams that we're in, to recognise that we've got our part to play, to know 
that the emotions we feel and the emotions we show will spread to other people. Help us to recognise that and to take responsibility for it. Help us to be the light and the joy in others' lives, as you, Lord, are the light and the joy in ours. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So thanks very much for listening and stay positive.